Have you ever wondered why most medical logos and symbols contain a picture of a serpent, the symbol of Satan, wound around a staff? The most familiar are the caduceus, which has two snakes wound around a wing staff, and the rod of Asclepius, which has only one snake. Now, not surprisingly, the World Health Organization features this sign. The American Medical Association has an almost identical sign. The Army Medical Corps, U.S. Public Health Service, the symbol of dentistry, and even Pfizer all carry this serpent symbol, although Pfizer's is stylized. The Bible, of course, tells us in Revelation 12:9 that the serpent is a symbol of Satan. So how did this come about? What are the biblical connections to the serpent on a staff? And is this something that we should be worried about? Now, in order to answer that question of whether we need to be worried, we need to dip back into the origins of this symbol, which are back in ancient Greek mythology. And I know what you're thinking, mythology, really? But there are links to the Bible, to the seven churches of Revelation, and to modern current day events, in the pandemic, you're going to be shocked. So hold on to your hats for a most exciting episode. Normally, I have zero interest in ancient Greek myths, which are myths after all, and also pagan. But when the characters in those myths appear in the Bible, I take notice. When they also appear in history or in real life, I also tend to take notice. Now, Apollyon or Apollo, as you may have heard of him called, is one of the most famous of these characters appearing in the book of Revelation, chapter 9, where he is listed as the king of the bottomless pit, and he rises out of the pit with a horde of demon locusts to sting those without the seal of God. This is the fifth trumpet. We discussed this in a previous video about Apollyon. There's a link in the description. We believe he is not Satan, but another demonic fallen angel that is imprisoned in the pit. This is the same demonic power that went by the name Apollo, as we said in the Greek mythology and other names in mythology of other cultures. Our channel's opinion is that many of these ancient so-called gods were actually fallen angels and demons. Apollyon is one of these, but his link to medicine and Corona is very interesting. Yes, I said Corona as in coronavirus. Now, in Greek mythology, the links between Apollyon, king of the bottomless pit, Corona, a woman, a corrupt medical system, and the serpent Satan are uncanny. Asclepius, who is the Greek god of medicine, was the son of Apollo and a mortal woman named Corona. And Asclepius' symbol is a serpent yeah, a serpent like Satan, wound around a staff. The same symbol used by the American Medical Association, British Medical Association, and hundreds of other medical groups throughout the world. One of the world's leading Asclepius clinics back in the first century was in Pergamum, one of the seven churches of Revelation. And the letter from Jesus to that church references that clinic, at least by implication. You can't make this kind of stuff up, these kind of links. But what do they really mean biblically? We want to start with a shout out to a member of our community, Joseph Mekizedek, who brought this connection to our attention. When you folks find interesting material like this, let us know in the comments. We are stronger as an entire community when we share things like this. So back to the Apollyon Corona link. As we said, the Greek god of medicine, Asclepius, was born to Apollo and a human mother, Corona. I'm sure this caught your attention just like it did mine. Is there a relationship to the coronavirus? We'll talk about that in a little bit. However, let's first look at their son. And remember, in the mind of this channel, these ancient gods might be representations of real life fallen angels. Asclepius is probably best known in today's world for his symbol, the staff of Asclepius, which is a serpent entwined rod currently used by much of the world as a symbol of the medical profession. 
Although in a few cases, the caduceus, the symbol of commerce, which is a double winged snake, is sometimes mistakenly used by medical groups. The original Hippocratic oath taken by all medical professionals began with the invocation. I swear by Apollo, the physician, and Asclepius, and by Hygieia, and Panacea, and all the gods. So there is a pagan origin to that oath as well. The idea of a serpent being associated with medicine is also very disturbing to me because I'm in the healthcare field. The symbol of a serpent has always represented Satan. So this symbolism causes a lot of concern. However, the idea of a snake on a staff has a biblical basis as well, as you probably know, in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, four through nine, fiery serpents were biting and killing the children of Israel. God instructed Moses to construct a bronze version of one of these serpents on a pole and erect it so the children of Israel could see it. Everyone who looked on this pole would live. Jesus referred to this event in his nighttime meeting with Nicodemus. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes will have eternal life in him. So the serpent on a staff was a symbol of the cross. Satan, the serpent, defeated on the cross. And everyone who places his faith in the defeat of Satan has eternal life. However, as Israel frequently did, they twisted the meaning of symbols like that. When Hezekiah became king, he also crushed to pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the sons of Israel had been burning incense to it, and it was called Nehushtan. In Hebrew, the term is a proper noun, coming from either the word snake or brass or both, and means the great serpent or the great brass. Who is the great serpent? Why, Satan, of course. So is the medical symbol a good one or a bad one? Is it the cross or a symbol of a pagan idolatry? That depends on who you think is doing the healing. A doctor empowered by Jesus who realizes that all healing comes from the Lord or a pagan humanistic doctor who believes science is the healer. So it can be either good or bad. Now, as we mentioned before, clinics for Asclepius arose in several places. One of these was in the town of Pergamum, which is the location of one of the seven churches of Revelation. And here is the amazing part. Jesus referred to this clinic indirectly. The healing center was called the Asclepion. In the first century, this was sort of a cross between a hospital and a health spa where patients could get everything from a mud bath to major surgery. Even the emperors came from as far away as Rome to be treated there in Pergamum. So this was no ordinary clinic. Interestingly, the pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem, where there was a rumor of angels stirring the water, perhaps you remember that story from the gospels, was also thought to be an Asclepion. Now in Pergamum, patients entered through an underground tunnel. Then they drank a sedative and spent the night in the dormitories while non-poisonous snakes crawled around them at night. They were told that the serpent god, Asclepios, would speak to them in their dreams and give them their diagnosis. After their treatment, they were then given a black stone with their name inscribed on it to leave on a path that led up to the Asclepion, sort of a first century version of a like on Facebook. It was sort of a, a, a kind of advertising. Oh, look at all these black stones. All these people were healed. In Jesus's letter to Pergamum, he contrasts these black stones with a white stone. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. 
so healing by a serpent with a black stone or eternal healing by Jesus with a white stone. That is the choice that Jesus offers. Again, this seems the same contrast with the staff of Asclepius being contrasted with the cross. Two places in scripture then, but this contrast between Jesus's healing and earthly medicine seems to be made. This brings us to a very unusual association of Asclepius's mother being named Corona or Coronas and his father being the king of the bottomless pit. Now this channel doesn't believe for a minute that ancient myths have any sort of prophetic ability. It's unusual, however, just like a number of Islamic prophecies that seem to be the exact inverse of Christian ones. And the same is true for some of these Greek myths. How can these things be true? Well, the father of lies is Satan. In terms of Islamic prophecies, he knows his Bible inside and out. So it was a simple matter for his fallen angels to give Muhammad a prophecy that seemed to contrast with the Bible. Then, it is another simple matter for Satan to influence his followers to try and fulfill those same false prophecies. So Islamic prophecies aren't true, but they can be an influence on those following that religion to try and fulfill them. In terms of Corona, that she and the king of the bottomless pit mothered Asclepius, the false physician, this sure sounds like a headline from today's alternative news channels that Satan and the virus together have led to a corrupted medical system. But how could we explain this similarity rationally? We know the ancient myths are not prophecy, especially names like Corona. Yet the name of the woman in the legend came first, long before the virus. So how did this supposed prophecy come about? Satan's followers, the New World Order, frequently like to tip their hat to future events in the media and in movies. The show The Simpsons is notorious for supposed prophetic shows like the one foretelling a Trump presidency, etc. What if Satan was tipping his hat in terms of a name Corona? The myth existed long ago. Satan knew this. He probably helped come up with it. But the virus didn't exist. It, at least it didn't have a name. The virus appeared recently, and evidence now shows it likely to have been created in a lab in China. Did Satan inspire his followers to work on that type of virus to make this ancient myth appear to be prophetic? I mean, who knows? It sounds very far-fetched, but Corona and a fallen angel birthing a false medical system? That is a scary coincidence. A very scary coincidence. Satan has done things like this before. Based on the Bible, Satan knew a seed of the woman would be born and would crush his head. In addition to trying to stop that seed from being born, Satan also filled the world with stories about counterfeit messiahs born to a virgin who would rise from the dead. Stories like the Egyptian Osiris or the Babylonian Tammuz. If you've ever wondered why those stories sound like Jesus' story, that is why. Satan planted those stories to deceive and confuse the world. Some myths can be negative like this one. Other cultural ideas actually can be very positive. God has given himself a witness in every culture that he is real and that the Bible is true. In the ancient 4,000 year old Chinese pictograms, a large number of the characters are based on stories from the book of Genesis. The word create, for instance, the word for boat, the word for tempter, basic words in any language, yet the Chinese characters were all based on the Genesis account in a way that is irrefutable. How is this possible? We'll click right here to keep watching and learn how these characters amazingly match the Genesis story and also how this might have happened. Till then, this is Nelson.
and I'll see you there.